Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Corner My Way In and let's get straight to business. So like you guys know I was uh, for the past week or so I've been focusing on I put the project aside a little bit that way I can focus on learning a little bit more about the back end because like you guys know I want to make my project a full stack application and in order for me to do that I need to get more familiar with Node, with Express and with databases which in this case I'm going to learn Postgres and uh, it's based on what i'm learning is going to be called the pern stack and of course i, I want to learn about uh, mongodb eventually but for now i want to get comfortable with the pern stack and then we'll go forward to that so what was i doing this week so as you guys know i was learning taking this uh, tutorial uh node js crash course by traverse media and it's a two hour long uh, tutorial but it was very useful and I just love the way the Brad teaches because he takes you step by step and everything that he does he builds on top of it so by the time you finish the tutorial if you really pay attention um, you will come out knowing a little bit more than you knew prior to that in my case I didn't know anything so it's a 12 hour long tutorial but it took me uh like six seven hours to finish because i was really making sure i understood any everything before i moved along something that he emphasized throughout the crash course was that make sure you understand the fundamentals because you could go straight and start learning express if you have basic understanding of function variables and data types and things of that nature um things that you're going to use with express but Learning fundamentals of Node will help you once you start with Express, you're good to go. So this side that you guys are looking is me already working on the uh, on the Express tutorial because I, I just finished uh, the Node. and But we'll go to this in a bit. So uh, I learned a lot of basic concepts and I just, again, I just love the fact that he will tell you, look, you, this is how it was done before before Express came in. So like things like file names and directory names uh, that for Node you will have to uh, make a, a function out of because they were not compatible with the ES modules. Now you can use them with Express. So something that you guys will see is that I'm very specific with my, when I'm taking crash courses, my get commits are very different. I, I don't just put random things. I really uh, write comments and I make sure that when I, I, I identify like I put learned so I always know that if I put learned in a portion of one of my commits is because there was a new topic and then if I'm a little bit confused I will add uh, notes uh, at the end so I can always go back and understand what's going on so for this case I learned about the file system module and how to write an append file so one of the things that I learned here is what that with the method write file you can um, add some information to the to whatever file you're working on and if you don't have a database it still creates one so if you write uh, let's say this message I'm learning the purse tag uh, which is and then uh, what it does is it writes it but if you refresh it it deletes it because it doesn't have somewhere to go and then you can add another uh, uh, new line if you put uh, if you use append you can append things to your current file and it, you, you connect it and then you'll use um, every d d different method like write to write new files, append to connect them and read to read them meaning to get that information and I can go on and on with this uh, tutorial but there were things that uh, got my attention uh, a lot of them are important but I got my attention a lot with this one with the crypto demo because this is something very important like hashing and uh, how to use hash and how to encrypted decrypt a text because when you using user information um, you need to be able to encrypt certain things like passwords and users because you don't want to get hacked and uh, you want to make sure your database and your servers is protected as possible so uh, for this one I really I don't every topic it was great but I really enjoyed this one because this was was more of a real world application so here you will ha hash uh, uh, with the algorithm SHA-256 and you will update which means you will change you will add uh, whatever information you're trying to pass in this uh, 
example, I'm putting the password, but you would never do that in the in the real world. It was just more for the sake of the example. And the random bytes, it just, just generates like cryptographically secure random data. It just makes sure uh, it creates bytes. So that's what these numbers mean. The 256, the 16, I think there's a 32 somewhere. I don't know if it's, a, yeah, here. It just, it, it, this represents bytes. So that's how it, the, the, the encryption takes place when you use it. And you can have the option of using Cypher, which encrypts the data. And you can use the option of decipher. So when you want to go back and change it back to normal. So all it means is when you, uh, uh, ciphering data, it, it, you're turning into like an encryption, like with a lot of numbers and, and, and symbols and stuff. And when you want to go back to it, uh, do the cipher, you go back to it. So, um, one of the things that I learned was this example is like, if you, the best way that you can explain is that, um, this part, this portion here, all it means is something, uh, th these are things that they all have meaning. They're not just randomly used. So all of these things that you see here and here, these are all important things that each of them mean something. So this is more for, uh, these are our, our algorithms, these two, and this one is hex for, uh, hexadecimals. That's, that's how it breaks down the, the, the encryption. And if you're not, not too familiar with it, I, I recommend going over the topic. But once you read it and get some examples, like for instance, in this example, all it's doing is, uh, we turn in the, the learning the print stack, which is a string, into a, uh, into a, which is a string. And we turn them into a hexadecimal, which in turn turns it like in a in a in an encryption version. Whereas if you do the opposite, what you're doing here on these in these arguments, you're telling the the opposite. Uh, the encrypted, which will be this portion here, which is a hexadecimal, we want to turn it back into UTF-8, which in return gives you a string. So you will go back from uh, to, to this. So that was very important and really got my attention. Um, Another, once I finished, uh, I started learning about Postman. And the great thing about it is, uh, VS Code has an extension. Of course, VS Code has like extensions for everything, but it's so useful. Like if I, for example, I always open, I already opened this, uh, server for the express, um, tutorial that I'm doing. And if you want to access, uh, whatever you're working on, in this case, uh, here, if I want to access this information, I just go, uh, create a HTTP request and let me do this APA post and then I actually get access to it and Yes, you have the option that you can do this. Uh, you can do this here on the website uh, But it may it really makes no sense because if you're not checking for something Massive you can do it from here. and You don't even have to leave the VS code. So this has been very helpful uh, An extension I actually really like it you can do all types of Methods, post, put, delete, and, and whatever these are that are, I don't even know what they are for, but the the basic ones you can do it here, which is very good and useful. Um, you can do the li limits. It's like it's very useful. You see, there's three posts, and then I we can check either by single. We can do a uh, limit to like limit the ones that we are seeing, and it's been very. Uh, I've been learning a lot. So the funny thing is it took me longer to get, go through the note through node uh the crash course because it was just fundamentals and stuff. I'm actually breezing through this uh crash course of express because I'm already building on top of the foundations that I already had. So that has been very uh useful. And which made sense why I should have I did the note crash course first and now I'm doing the express because now everything that I'm seeing the paths, the parse and the, the required, the params, the lessons, I already know what that is. Um, so far, uh, I'm, this is the crash course that I'm taking from Brad Traversy as well, Express Crash Course. And it's not that long, it's just an hour and 46 minutes and I'm already 33 minutes in. Um, and something that I, I'm doing the same thing, the commits all say learn, so I know that I'm learning about a particular um, subject and that way when I go back if I when I get lost because I know I will once I start using it on my application I can always go back to it and that's why the the, the learned uh, part helps me like 
find whatever topic I need to find. But the one thing that uh, I really uh, took me some time to understand was uh, I learned about SQL injections. I didn't even know what that was. I know SQL is the like the language for like the databases and stuff. And Postgres is it's like the the tool that you use so you can use the language of SQL. And I've never heard of uh, of SQL injection. And all it is is it's something very dangerous. If you don't put certain parameters within your code when you're building a server, um, someone can literally go to your application and do a command, something like this. It's nothing crazy. 100%, I bet you I can't do it here. But if, let's say equal delete. Uh, oh, I think that's a command for for SQL. That's the the example that he gave. So I'm not familiar with it, but somebody can do something like that in your application, delete and delete your entire database, and they can also access it and um, modify and update things. You imagine like you have a website where you're selling like watches for let's say three thousand dollars, and somebody goes in and updates for three dollars and buys it. You screwed. Like there's nothing. There's no goal around it. Uh, so I really took my time with this topic because this, this was the closest thing to like a real world application and I made sure that I took notes so I understood why each of these queries and what the parameters meant and what the corresponding values did. And he did this small example. One of the things that you do is you sanitize the code and the way that you do it is it's, you let it the, the server know why you want to be checked when it's being checked. Meaning if somebody... Uh, wants to see, I don't know, the limits of how many posts you have, you can put it and make sure that uh, they can only look for that. For example, if we try to look for the limit and we put two, uh, before we do that, let's do this post, right? I want you, you guys that you only see one, two, three. There's only three posts. So if we do the limit and we ask for two, it will only give us two. If we do one, it's only going to give us one. Three is going to give us three. Now let's say we want 30. There's no 30. There's only three posts. But if you put 30, it will give you the current ones that we have. So even if you try to, if you request something that is not being given here, it won't give you access to that. That's why the sanitation is so important. So you make sure that uh, the you set limits, you set parameters of things that you want to be able to give. And if not, this is what you get. Meaning, in this case, there's only three posts. You can check two, you can check for one, but there's there's not a hundred. And let's say you write equal love, like a different path. It will give you this because this is what we are telling the software. Hey, uh, to the, so the server, based on this limit, this is the only information that you can provide. If someone is requesting for something else, this is all we get in. This is all we give them back. So this actually protects your server from getting destroyed. So it was something that I was not familiar with it, and I even made sure to add it. So um, this been my this been my favorite uh, portion of the of both tutorials so far um, the, of the Node and the Express because it was so uh, realistic uh, in in terms of a real world application. And yeah, this is uh, where I am at so far. And then I'm I'm only thirty three minutes in. And the goal is once I finish, I want to take a quick uh, crash course on Postgres. So because I want to make sure I have my foundations with Express, Node, and, and Postgres before I go back into the project. So I'm going to be learning Postgres. I dabbled a little bit. I saw some videos probably like a year ago. I don't remember much. I do have it here installed. Um, but I need to go back and, and, and learn. I know the commands weren't that hard to, to, to learn. And I, and, and I took some notes in a Google Doc that I have. Um, so I'm going to be going back into that. And yeah, that's all I have, guys, for this week. Uh, it's been very hot. I hope you guys are staring, staying cool. Uh, super hot. But we still got to get this knowledge in. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, Node, Express, and Postgres. And then I'm going to use that information that I've learned those fundamentals of I will be going back to the my examples my commits and my notes and of course I'll be using Google if I get lost but I just want I just wanted to make sure they had the foundations um, of the back end before I move forward with my project so that's what I have for you guys have a great weekend 
and see you on the next one. Peace.